Uh, this player raises the 2.5. That's kind of a big opening raise. Uh, he has a lot of chips. It's 25 blinds. I'm just going to call. I think I could definitely 3-bet. I think calling looks very scary, though. You rickrolled him without playing the song. <laughs> yeah, right? That's funny. Yeah, I got to make my own uh, rickroll. No, you're good, man. I know, you, I know you meant to say middle of the night, not midnight. Okay, he raised, we called, the betting got reopened. This player jams. This is tough, because we just got all these chips, right? It's 180k. I mean, he did make a big opening raise, so that kind of suggests to me that it's ace-king or ace-queen. But there is a chance it's queens. It also says as much for pocket tens. Oh, it's so brutal. I have the chip lead, like, of the whole tournament, by a lot. Uh, this is, I'm going to fold this one. I honestly don't know where I'm at, and I don't want to, I don't, I don't think racing for this many chips is a good situational thing. It's obviously a profitable play if he has ace-king, but I think this is one of those Phil Helmy spots where we just, we look for something better. I said he could have queens, right? What a fold. What a fold. What a fold. I said he could definitely have queens because he opened, but he could also have tens. It was the, it was the consideration of I don't want to race versus uh, ace-king, right? His rejam is kind of really improper because that guy just went all in for five big blinds. If he makes it like 15, he probably gets a flop out of me. And then when the board pairs kings on the turn, uh, it's kind of rough. Uh, you know, for for me to fold the, the jacks. So, definitely made a great decision there. Uh, game face on, win-win. Hell yeah. Let's go on to the next one. Pocket J's. See a raise here. Uh, two and a half standard. Uh, I decided not to uh, re-raise. Um, just because it was... A weird scenario with this player having 25 big blinds I don't want to race for that much but I but he's raising out of an early position I don't want to fold so I kind of was like whatever and my problem was is that if I re-raised uh, this player can just call off very wide and there is a wrinkle here that comes up this player now goes all in on the button and this is a good spot for him to do with a lot of hands he only has five and a half blinds he was dead last in the tournament and at this point if he gets called, if he doesn't get called, it's awesome for him. Uh, but if he gets called once, he more than triples up versus one player. So he can go super wide here. Uh, in game, I didn't think he was super wide, but it doesn't matter. He doesn't have enough chips for him to be a factor. Now this is where it gets interesting. It goes back to this player, and he jams. And this wasn't so much a soul read as it seemed like it was. What this was was it came down to in the video that. I had too many chips to want to race. Like, if you see how many uh, chips this actually is, we're at 400k. We're at like two tables left. We're actually less than two tables. So we're getting down to the final table, and I'm somewhere near the top. I'm like third or fourth in chips at this point. And this is just too many chips to play for, even with jacks. Um, because what's the best case scenario? Ace king, right? He's not doing this with ace queen. Off suit. It's just not happening. Happening. Ace queen suited. Possibly, yeah. Um, but that's the same result for us. We're up against two overcards. You know what I'm saying? I guess Ace Queen can do it with his stack size. He had about 25 blinds, right? So, yeah, so he can absolutely have Ace Queen or, or, uh, and also Ace King. He's never having Ace Jack. That's just no fucking way. He would have just called that, if anything, and then I jam and he folds. Um, but when he makes the rejam, I, I said in game, you know what? I don't know what's going on here, but I feel like I have to fold. It sucks, but I feel like there's better spots and my skill will carry me through. I don't need to take this big gamble. This isn't like a game breaker where I can race ace king with somebody for half my stack midway through a tournament and vault into the chip lead and use those chips as we get down to the bubble, you know what I'm saying? To like build and build and build and build and build. No, we're already past that point. At this point, we're looking for good spots, and a lot of the chips I'm going to win in a tournament uh, is going to be post-flop play. I'm not trying to race. It's not. We're not gambling here. So I just go ahead and fold. And I remember there were some people in chat that when this hand replayed uh, said that it was a mistake. 
Um, but then we got to see the hands <laughs> when all the cards came out and I was up against pocket queens. And this is a fun one because, yeah, it's cool that he had queens, but if he had aces or kings or ace queen, like if he had had ace queen here and then this was the board run out, everybody would have been, oh, you know, that's awful and you know, you're a sucker. But it's the same result, man. Uh, it was just too many chips to risk because we would have been down to 200k if we just lost a race. And we're up against an overpair quite often there, aces, kings, and queens. So I like the fold. It's just one of those Phil Hellmuth spots, we called it last night, where, yeah, GTO-wise, it's a good play to make that call because of the price. But versus the player's actual range of hands that they're on, we're kind of risking too much. Like, even if this player in a live game, if he was to turn over ace-king, I think I would still fold. And I would show him the ace-jack and just fold because it's just not worth it, you know?